Okay, so we'll we'll get started today with the with the new topics. And as we discussed yesterday, so today onwards we'll be talking about different technologies. Okay, so what you need to learn from the QA standpoint, quality assurance standpoint, we'll be talking about different technologies. Um, <clears throat> but before we do that, let's review some of the things that we have done and see if you how much you guys remember. Okay. and uh, see what your understanding is for those items. So we'll be talking about uh, starting with the SDLC phases, okay? And uh, see, see how much you guys remember for the SDLC side of things. So let's quickly summarize what we have for SDLC. Do you guys remember full name of the SDLC? Yes. Software, software development life cycle. Okay, this is very basic uh, thing. And uh, we have several phases. As you know, I mean, software goes through the similar uh, life cycle, just like anything else. I mean, any construction or anything else that you do. So what, what is our first phase for SDLC? Just without looking at your books. Hopefully you guys Morning. know. Planning. So okay. somebody said planning, right? Planning. So it starts with the planning for SDLC. Uh, second phase? Analysis. Analysis, right? Okay, good. I think you guys are a lot better than the last batch. Okay. Analysis, then then what is the uh, design. 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 design? All right, design. Okay. Development. Okay, development. Uh, development slash implementation. Right. So different terminology, but uh, yeah, you can use that either one. Testing. Testing. Testing, right? Testing. 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 Okay. Because once you have a software, then you test it, right? Well, what else is there? Acceptance. Acceptance. And acceptance right? Okay. All right. So acceptance and what is the last phase? Maintenance. Maintenance. Maintenance, not the deployment. Okay, deployment uh, is not a phase. Uh, I mean, you can technically call it a phase, but uh, maintenance is a terminology. Okay, maintenance is a terminology. Now, from the planning standpoint, hope you guys remember what happens in the planning phase. Uh, can anybody just quickly tell me what what happens in the planning? Anybody remembers? Defining scope and uh, strategy for the. What? Define scope. Strategy. Estimates and costs. Estimation, cost, uh, estimation and cost for what? Uh, for, the for, the for the project, right? For the... Not just uh, quality assurance side of things. Now, who, who does the work here? Uh, well, this manager. This manager. Project manager. Project manager. Project manager, right? Because Remember the planning phase, it's uh, all the activities happens. Uh, hey, do I want to proceed with the project or not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first, that's the first step. If they do decide to proceed with the project, then they will bring in project manager, okay? So he will do all the, how many resources I'm going to need? What is the high level scope? So they will define the business, high level business problem. And they'll start, they'll say, okay, I'm gonna need five developers. Uh, one tester, one business analyst, and so forth. Okay, so there, there is some activity. It happens as part of the estimation cost. There is another one is a resource planning. Okay, so resource planning is nothing but how many team members. I will know. So that gives idea about the cost as well. Okay, and this one is done by the PM or project manager. Okay, typically it's a PM. Okay. So once the project manager does that and everything is approved, budget is approved, whatever, they move forward with the next phase, which is the analysis phase. Okay, for the analysis phase, <laughs> what happens? What activities we do? Uh, do you guys do as a, anything as a QA? Okay. But what happens in the analysis and who does the work? So requirements, what about requirements? Uh, 
Tester does the deployment analysis. But somebody does something else before the tester can do that or uh, review, right? Who does the work here? Business analyst, right? So business analyst collects requirements and they use various <laughs> techniques. They will conduct the focus <laughs> interviews. They will sit down with the users uh, and put together a document like what you have for our flow or they will start creating the user stories which is nothing but individual requirements for the agile process so if you are if you are in the waterfall they will start bigger document and start collecting documenting everything end to end like context diagram they will they will start with the context diagram functional decomposition individual require business processes whatever there, there are tons of activities that happens it's a full-time job for ba okay so they will go through different processes okay so once you have once they have the requirement so end of the phase analysis phase or getting closer they will provide you the document or user stories ask for feedback that's where you come as a qa now generally qa means Meaning, uh, sometimes it's a test, uh, test lead. They will ask for feedback or because there might be 10 people in the team, they probably will not ask everybody, but at least they will ask the QA lead or QA team members, hey, please provide me feedback, find out any gaps, right? So this is where your review requirements comes and provide feedback, okay? So I think you guys did this activity earlier as part of your learning process so you understand what goes on clearly get clarifications and define the requirement At the end of the phase um now as part of this review requirement provide feedback there is another activity that happens <laughs> does anybody remember what else happens what else you guys start looking at it looking into other than just providing feedback. So that, that's part of the reviewing the requirement, right? Mm -hmm. But do you produce any document? Mm -hmm. What document the QA Specific. team produces? The requirement document. So you have requirement document, you have design document. What is the third document? That's the plan. Who owns that? That's the QA. Yeah. QA owns it, right? So that's the document. You start working on it basically because you need to produce that uh, so you will start working on the test plan at end of end of the analysis phase basically and as part of that the activities that you do is did anybody read the document what, what you guys do so what, what is in the document what what activities you guys do as part of the test plan. The test strategies. So it's a, it includes test strategy. Execution strategies and um, management. Execution strategy, right? You identify, identify environments, test environments that you need, right? Uh, environments, let's, uh, let me just put it, identify test environments. Uh, then one of the things I think uh, we did a exercise in the class. Test design. Uh, test design is a little bit later, but high level. So as part of the, the, the uh, this activity, right? You have, what did you guys provide uh, in the second session? Or I think first session, you guys, or second session, that was Dilip yes. showed you big Excel spreadsheet. The, the, the distribution time. Um, so is, planning, right? Yeah, planning, it's a planning. test plan. So plan includes resource, cost, uh, and everything. That's that's what the plan is about. I mean, any plan you look at it, PM does the same thing from the whole okay. project, QA does it from the testing standpoint. Mm -hmm. So test um, basically estimates. Man hours. Man estimates, hours. right? For um, duration, cost, cost, whatever. So you need to feed that in into the test plan. Okay, so that, that's what happens as part of the test planning process. Okay, so you start on it. Um, now, how did you guys come up with the cost and duration? 
how did you guys come up with it by reviewing the document. documents by reviewing requirement document right now when you say review so you start creating a picture um how many test cases i mean right as a high level high level right so you you started collecting the some type of you went through some process high level estimate for managed lenders based on these requirements i'm going to need maybe 10 test cases and high level scenarios you start breaking it down right test cases and uh, test scenarios this is how you come up with the estimate basically okay so that's that's the process you started going through it anything else you guys did as part of the analysis i think that's what that that's what you guys had earlier <clears throat> okay so once you finalize the requirement, once the BA finalizes or team finalizes the requirement, you move on to the design phase. And as part of the design phase, what happens? What, what does the design phase mean? Designing a system. Design what? The system. System, right? Okay, so and who does the work? Okay, so typically it's an architect or lead developer. Okay, they're not going to give somebody who is brand new, say, hey, go figure out design. No, that's not how it works. Somebody who is our senior developer, you can call it with, with the like five to 10 year experience, they will look at it and they will produce the system design. Um, Sometimes there will be, you will hear term detailed design document mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so there is part of it, basically design process. Whatever they have to do to build the system, they will produce different kinds of documents. What you have seen is a system design document um, and so forth. Now, as part of uh, QA, you review as much as you can, try to understand what they are trying to implement, right? Okay. Now, what else you do? You finalize your test plan, okay? Based on the activities, based on the design, because if they say, I'm gonna need this many systems to interact, you look at that and come up and modify your test plan. You started in the uh, requirements review, but then you will modify. If they are adding uh, designing the web services, if they are designing uh, various different components, then you will include that to test out those components. Okay. But ultimately, you will finalize your test plan. Okay. Okay. So once the design is final, they will hand it over to the development. Now they will say, yep, I got five developers. I'm going to distribute different modules to different developers. Um, and they will start implementing, start coding. Okay, so obviously this is done by the development team, developers, okay. You guys can see it right in the back. Yeah. Okay, just to make sure, okay, let me just move it up a little bit. Okay, and uh, what happens? When you say development do that, they start coding, right? It's a, it's a coding, coding um, and uh, other things. Now, while developers are doing that, what is that you do as a QA? You're not, you're not sitting idle, right? So what's your role here in the development phase? Yes. Are you doing testing? No. No, no, no. That tree, like a tree, and okay. so right. What, what? So you test scenarios, right? So mm -hmm. test scenarios. So you got while developers, it could be six months, or it could be two weeks, right? Or one week, whatever, whatever. If you are working on agile, so it could everything that gets done whole as DLC in two two weeks or three weeks, right? But you will your activity will remain same. You might spend two days so looking at the test scenarios, test uh, test case documentation, uh, planning type of thing. So create uh, test scenarios, 
uh, test cases, uh, document test cases. Uh, and uh, so forth. Okay, so this is where uh, you will actually start creating the detailed test cases. Okay, so, so whatever documents you are you are writing on document so far, so you will do that basically. Uh, if your tools available, you will start documenting with the tools directly. Okay, document test cases, test, test scenarios, and uh, so forth. Now, okay, so that part is done. Now, here, once the developers develop the software, um, and while you are you you are documenting at the same time, now when it comes to the testing, right? So you will get a code, which is a working version, right? Working version of software, and they will say, okay, go test the software now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so after six months, they will deliver the software to you and you will start on the testing activity. Now, as part of the testing, what, do you, what, are you, what is that you need to do from the testing? Test execution and bug reporting. Okay, so test execution. Okay, so you do bug reporting. And tracking. And tracking, okay. So you will take the actual whatever tests uh, that test case you documented now your system so you will follow the step by step instruction your own instruction and then you will start executing basically okay and then when you say bug reporting and tracking what's uh, so you compare the ex executed result versus actual results and if there is any variance or variance, then you will open a defect, right? So it's a defect management. That's a kind of like a, you can put different terminology, defect management as part of the testing life cycle. Okay. So, you, but the reporting is very important because you have to tell, you, you might send out daily emails, how much progress you are making how much uh, progress a team has made, how many defects are open, how many critical, how many medium, how many cosmetics defects, all those things you have to produce as part of your bug reports. Okay. Um, this, is, this is done every day? This is on daily basis. Yes, you have to, as a test lead, generally, they do it, test lead. If you have five team members, the test lead will produce. They will collect the information from individual or they, they will run the report, the tools have reports. So they can just run the report and uh, it will produce them. How many you guys are testing and how many defects are open uh, and uh, so forth. But you have to report to the management because management wants to know are we on track or not and uh, so forth. Okay, so that, that's the whole purpose. Now at end of the testing phase, now what happens if you find a bug? You send it back to the developer. You send it back to the developer, right? As part of the defect management process, there is a flow, right? I think Dilip went over. You send it back. Uh, developers will modify the code, and uh, they will create and update the software. Send it back to you after maybe one week or whatever time frame they have, uh, and then you will retest it. Okay. Now, as part of that, there is a regression happens and all other things, but with the new items so you have to execute whatever you executed uh, executed previously okay but that's part of the defect management and test execution process okay now at the end of this testing phase you certify as a qa the software is working it meets the business needs because you are wearing different hats right when you were executing the test case when you did the defect uh sorry uh, test test cases when you created it you actually were, were the head of different users and try to simulate what the actual users will do in the real life that's what you are doing when you are documenting the test cases right so you will execute that and you certify that hey it, it's fit for purpose it will meet the user needs from the quality assurance standpoint okay at, at end of the phase it may have few defects open Generally, it has, uh, uh, they have a go-no-go -no -go meetings. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll put the terminology here, go, no go meeting at end of the testing phase. And they will say, they will have to with the stakeholders. They will meet and say, I have 50, uh, 10 defects open, but they are not that high. So we can live with it. Even if software goes in production up or moves to the next phase. And uh, they will say, yep, everybody's good. Then move on to the acceptance phase. Okay. So those defects, they can fix it later on, basically, as part of the part of the other process. Okay. Once you certify, you, you will say software is good. Then next phase comes in, which is acceptance. Now, what happens in the acceptance phase? You user acceptance testing. Uh, repeat that, Rohini. The the client doing the use uh, user acceptance testing. Okay, so client uh, is a different terminology. It's the business users. Okay. okay. Business users who are the actual users of the system. So you certified as a QA wearing different hats. Now actual users like a lender comes in, dealer comes in, and they will start saying, hey, does this software works? basically for their purpose because mm -hmm. they, they will certify it. Those are called business users. Okay. So all those uh, people will conduct, uh, will do testing. Okay. Uh, which is a user acceptance testing. That's the reason it's called user acceptance testing or UAT. You will hear that term UAT. Okay. Now, what is your role? If they are doing the testing, what is your role as a QA? Do you execute this phase? We are helping them with the test cases. Well, your test cases are test done. Case. Then what, what are, and, and the test data. If they come up with uh, any defect, right? Because generally they are not tech technical savvy, right? I mean, those those folks may not have access to the quality assurance process. They don't understand QA process. Okay, so they will work with you very closely. So you will provide them more like a testing support. Okay, so terminology is testing support. So as part of that, you will still track the bugs, bug reporting. You will do that, bug reporting tracking. Because you have to, somebody has to report how many defects are open, yeah, so forth. You will still need to create the bugs for the developer, basically. Generally, users don't do that. They will work with you. They will say, oh, I, I found this issue. Then you will go and research it, why there is an issue. And if you check it, say, yep, it is an issue, then you will go and open a defect for them. Okay? So UAT, you can still have, you still have to do bug reporting and everything else. Okay? Testing support, bug reporting, uh, defect management, you can put both terminologies. Okay, because users are testing from the business functionality or process standpoint. So they will go start with the brand new, so they will have their own test case created, okay? If they're not gonna use your test cases. They will write, and you will help them write it, but uh, they will have business process. Hey, does the process work end to end? If I submit application, lender approves it, can the dealer give the money? So they will go through complete process. When you are, so what's the difference here? You are looking at from individual component standpoint. Does, can I submit a dealer? Can I create something? You also do the other testing, like business process testing, but these guys will do very thorough business process testing. Okay, that's the that's biggest difference between your testing and their testing. Their viewpoint is a little bit different. They're not gonna say, oh, hey, does this function works or not? No, they will look at overall standpoint. Okay, so once they once at end of the acceptance, they will certify um, basically. So again, there is a go-no-go -go meeting. Okay, uh, so go-no-go -no -go meeting. And they will say, yep, it's good or bad. Software is bad. Does it meet the need or not? And they will say, yep, it's good. Then you push it out to the production at the end of the meter, uh, end of the UAT phase. Okay. Push to production. This is where the production thing happens. 
Okay. Now, once it goes to the production, then what is in the maintenance? <clears throat> As they start using it. Yeah. So they will start using uh, here. We push to the production. Now they will start using it. Business users. They will meaning business users will start using it. In live environment. Okay. Um, but then that's a production, right? But then what is the maintenance? Mean. Is there any, any, any smaller cosmetic bugs type of thing? Uh, if there are any issues, um, small uh, bugs, cosmetic items. So if typos, they discover some typos or something. For example, cosmetic meaning, uh, hey, maybe the form has instead of first name, it says it just says first or something. They forgot the name. So small bugs and cosmetic items, they can fix it. Development team team can fix uh, the issue in production, okay? But if they discover, hey, I cannot submit any major things um, or there is a new feature that I want, then they will not fix it in production environment. It will go through the whole life cycle again, okay? That's where, but the maintenance is like smaller items, they can patches, some data issues, um, like um, data issues, so if I save something, but something is not being saved, one of the field out of uh, uh, 200 fields in on credit application, if one of the field is not being saved, they have to fix it basically. It's a, it's a minor thing, but they still have to make sure it works. Okay, and uh, so forth. So those are the some of the activities that happens. If major functional disease for new features or functions, repeat as SDLC, okay? So new features or functions, they have to repeat SDLC. So at that time, user can use the um, product No, they can, they will still use it, but what happens like a data issue, right? Something is not being saved, one of the field. So they will still submit the get the credit application, uh, but then they will fix it in the back end. So somebody, some day DBAs or somebody, they will go in and fix some data on a daily basis or some automated way, okay? Now, if, if they cannot save the credit application, whole credit application, it's a bigger issue, right? That means something uh, didn't work properly and uh, QA did not do the job because it didn't even get saved, right? So that, that's where bigger implication comes in the picture. But I mean, they obviously they have to fix it, emergency because that's a big functionality broken. They cannot use the system. They have to fix it here. But generally new features or functions go through the SDLC. Okay. So that, that, this is kind of like a summary of where you are. So right now we are, we went through analysis. You guys went through the, look at the both documents we reviewed. We, we were kind of like a simulating design activities. So you wrote the test cases over the last uh, couple of weeks. I'll, I'll send you this in the email, don't worry. Um, so this is where we are. So now we will start taking a look at other phases, okay? Now, as part of uh, this thing, imagine uh, like companies like Nationwide, right? So you have people sitting here doing the daytime uh, business analyst, right? Uh, and they have a team in India who does the execution in mm -hmm. India. Uh, business analysts might be all over the US as well, right? So how do they communicate all this thing? If you have on piece of paper, everything like requirements document, your test cases are on piece of paper. How do they communicate? It becomes a nightmare, right? You cannot change anything. Once you write the document, it's very hard to update if somebody provides you feedback, mm -hmm. right? Same thing, I mean, if the developers are coding and uh, because uh, there are several releases that happen, like Amazon does like, I, I don't know, maybe 50 times a day, Facebook does the same way. Every release happens during the day, 50 times a day for small, small changes uh, or whatever they do. So you cannot practically manage on piece of paper. Okay, all these activities. So that's where the tools like DevOps comes in the picture. 
because it's available all over. Anybody is India, China, who cares? They just log in normally. That's where the notes feature we were talking about yesterday. They can communicate very efficiently. As soon as you put a note, it goes email send it goes out to the whole team member. Okay, and somebody will have to take a look at it. Or whoever owns that piece, they will say, or oh, they will go in and take a look at it. Same thing, they can do the coding and tie to the particular feature, piece of code. And I'll show you some features in the tool as well. But from your QA standpoint, you can open a defect. You can do the defect management right in the Azure DevOps as well. You execute it. If you find discrepancy, then you will open a defect right there. Okay, so we will take a look at all those features from the quality assurance standpoint. So there, there are different things as part of the tools available. Okay. okay, so that's why these tools are called ALM tools, Application Lifecycle Management Tools. Azure DevOps, Jira, all they are part of ALM tools. Okay, they don't call it SDLC tools. They call it Application Lifecycle Management Tools. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any question on this one before we move on? I think this is pretty straightforward. Hopefully that gives you a good perspective on where you are um, in this process. So let's move on. Okay, so let's take a look at one more item before we actually dive into the tool. Okay, so you understood some uh, SDLC side of things. And I, was, I think I already shared this uh, slide with you on, on the online documents. You don't have it here printed out, but this is very important. You need to understand, and I think some of the interview things will come in the play as well, because they will ask you what, what activities you do as, uh, as part of your project, what did you do, some of the activities wise. So you just remember, go through, keep this diagram handy uh, so that it will help you prepare for the interview process. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so after, let me start on different things. So now we'll take a look at it, what different tools are used as part of the what different uh, testing activity uh, that happens as well as part of the SDS. So let me go through this quickly. Um, let's talk about uh, this process from different perspectives, software development, what happens in the actual software development world. So I have a few developers, right, uh, in the team. Uh, here in this case, I have three developers in the team uh, and they are developing the software, basically, generally as part of the software development, implementation. I'm talking about implementation, okay? So, so somebody will work on login module, somebody will work on the managed lender, somebody will work on uh, dealer management, something like that, okay? Uh, and similar thing happens, right? The developers divide and conquer, QA divide and conquers as well if it's a big team. Uh, so you might be assigned a login module, you might be assigned a different module and so forth. Now, when they are developing, they are writing on their uh, laptop, the piece of code they are developing on their laptop. Now everybody works on it, but somebody has to put together all piece of code integrated, right, basically. So generally what they do at the end of the day or during the day, as soon as they are done with the particular feature uh, code, they will push it out to a centralized server, basically. And that's where the code comes together, okay? Uh, so these guys, they are developing individually. Now they will deploy the code in the development environment, which is nothing but a bigger server. And everybody, all the code is merged and uh, it's deployed. So from their development environment, so they will, they will continue daily. They, they will do it three times a day, five times a day. It doesn't really matter. In the ideal world, as soon as the developer checks in the code, it automatically deploys. So tools like Azure DevOps or Jira, it will automatically uh, deploy the code as soon as somebody 
uh, deploys the code basically checks in checks in the code uh, to the uh, repository where is the centralized piece of code is stored okay so it will deploy it here from there once they are done with all the development activities, the code is moved to the test environment. Okay. And from there, once you are done certifying your testing, code is moved to the UAT or port support environment where business users can do their testing. And finally, code goes to the production environment. Okay. So these are typical environments. Okay. So then this is a typical four different servers. For uh, dedicated for different activities. Now, let me ask you one question. So, there are different uh, testing happens in different environments. So, what happens in the um, development environment? Is there any testing activities? Unit, unit testing. Okay. So, and there is component a component testing. Okay. So, unit testing. <coughs> uh, integration, integration testing. Okay. So, so let's see where those testing happens, right? So developers, while developing the code, they will do unit testing on their machine, okay, on their computer. That's when they are they are debugging through. So there are software development tools. When as soon as they are writing the code, uh, they, they can do breakthrough and line, step by uh, walk, um, they put a breakpoints and do step by step walk through the code on their own machines, okay? So it doesn't happen here. Unit testing happens on developer's machine, okay, as they are developing the code. It's a similar, um, kind of like a, what you have test cases wise, uh, they, may, they will write that unit test within the code. Generally it's written within the code, so it's a code again, okay? Uh, so it's done by the developer. Now, once they deploy it here, in the development environment, that's where everybody's code comes together, right? So they have to do integration testing. Hey, does the code work properly or not? Okay, because everybody is working on different module. Now they deploy to the development environment. That's where the integration testing comes in the picture. Mm -hmm. If I log in, if I log in, can I go to my home page? From my home page, uh, second guy is uh, working on managed lender. Can I go to managed lender and perform the activity? So that's we, that's the activity or testing is called integration testing. Again, that is done by the development team. You don't even come in the picture. Unit testing, integration testing. Now, once they are done with their integration testing, everything works together and they feel they don't have many bugs. They will say, please go and test it in the test environment. So that's where you do different kinds of testing, right? Um, you have system testing. You is, there is a term here called functional testing, regression testing, because you are repeating the cycle here, right? Uh, basically for 10 different uh, kinds of testing. I hope you guys remember what is uh, what those testing terminology means. Now, when the developers do their testing, integration and unit, what type of testing do you do? White box testing. So white box, black box? No, developers do white box test. White, white box, box right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a type, testing type, white box, black box. Okay, uh, I think these are common interview questions as well. Okay, what is really white box? Okay, and then you can explain them this process here. Because they know the code, they know exactly how the code is written, mm -hmm. and they have full visibility in the code. They it, it's called white box. Mm -hmm. Black box is something you don't see inside, mm -hmm. right? That's the black box. So that's the type of testing, regression testing, system testing, functional testing, uh, smoke testing, whatever you call it. It happens in the test environment. Okay. Now, once uh, code, you certify the code, code moves to the UAT, and that's where business user will conduct their uh, UAT testing, which is again a black box it, because they have no idea how the code is written or what they want to do. Okay. And finally, in the production, do you do any testing? The maintenance. No, but what is part of the maintenance, right? But again, maintenance is if the user reports a bug, 
you that's part of the maintenance right but do you when you deploy the code what type of testing you will do in the production first time let's say you never deployed r floor in the production you are deploying for the first time what is the testing that you smoke have to testing do? what is it smoke testing uh, smoke testing right so you have to make sure the application comes up can you log in properly or not right those are some basic things you're not going to execute anything else because then it will create the data you're not going to be able to create a user okay because you don't want to do that it's for business user only. okay so you will do some type of smoke testing here okay now as part of managing the overall process our flow will come because uh, not our flow but devops will come because developers can deploy the code in the um, azure devops you will also conduct your testing uh, activities in the devops create the defects in the devops everything comes in the jira or devops basically process By the way, the DevOps means developments and operations. That's the full name of DevOps, okay? It's a process. DevOps is a process. Azure DevOps is a, is a tool, okay? Azure DevOps is a tool name. DevOps is a process. You can do that using Jira, same DevOps, development operation. Uh, it's a lifecycle management tools, but it's a process, okay? You can manage the overall process uh, in the tool. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly put together. Uh, <clears throat> now here, some performance testing uh, happens. Generally, it happens in the UAT or production support environment. Uh, now, what is performance testing? Anybody remember the terminology? Stress we... the testing and the load testing. Okay, what happens in the performance testing, right? So to see if it is functioning yeah. properly, the speed and um, maybe um, or the functionality or non-functional uh, non-functional requirements, mm -hmm. right? So you had a page supposed to show up in three seconds. Those type of requirements, which are performance requirements. If I click on, if I go go from login, I'm supposed to see my home page within three seconds. 99% of the time, I think in the system design document, they have identified 99% of the time, less than five seconds, 96% uh, of the time, less than 3% uh, and so forth. So you, that, that, that is what called performance testing, right? If I search on dealer, I should see the result within three seconds, basically. If it takes like 10 seconds, then it's not uh, of no use because user is waiting to see the results for the listing of the dealer. So those are those requirements are part of the performance requirement. Now as a QA, do you do performance testing? Probably not, okay? Because mm -hmm. there are specialized tools used for the performance testing. You might have to do some scripting as well. So there are specialized QAs. Okay. If you pick up the additional skills for uh, some scripting language or something, you can do conduct the performance testing. Um, so for that, uh, do we need to write down a test thesis or not for uh, non uh, No, you need to work with the design documents or work <laughs> with the development team and understand what is the performance requirements. If it's documented properly, the, then you can go conduct it. But there are tools available like JMeter, uh, Load Runner, and so forth as part of the performance testing. So if you pick up the tool, it's, it's not, these tools are not difficult, okay? Uh, you can, you want to, if you know one tool, you can configure, pick up the second tool, third tool, but they are from different companies. They will have different user interface and so forth. Okay. All right, so as part of that, uh, let's uh, take a look at it, what different uh, technologies we're gonna learn in this uh, next four, four, uh, four sessions, okay? Or five sessions, whatever we get. So today we'll start with the DevOps. Now DevOps is everywhere. You probably will see that DevOps, Jira, ALM, right? These are everywhere, all phases, because they are lifecycle management tools. Everybody does their work in the DevOps, 
uh, Azure DevOps or Jira or QCLM. These are three popular ones out there. So we'll start with DevOps today. Then we'll take a look at Jira, probably next Sunday or something like that. Um, now, any unit and gen unit, you, you don't use it. Okay, so they are used by the developer teams. They write the code within the code. They are used for unit testing or integration testing. Um, <clears throat> here, we have um, other tools as well, which is a UFT, QTP, or Rumi Cucumber Water Selenium. You're going to hear those terminologies, right? We are going away with the UFT, QTP. If uh, we have a Catlon is a tool that we're going to cover as part of the automation task. Okay. So all for these are these are for automation. Whatever you are doing manually, portion of it you can automate. Because you, you're going to repeat, remember the regression task, you might have to execute the same test maybe 10 times before the fun, before you approve, it's working on. And uh, when we go through the execution, it, you can see how much time it takes to execute. It probably takes you five minutes, depending on the complex scenario that you have. It could take uh, one hour to execute one test case. If you have to repeat uh, 10 times, it's going to consume 10 hours. Within a tool, you just press the button, and will execute within uh, maybe 10, 10 seconds or something like that. Same test case. That's why people want you to know at least some automation part of it. So we'll talk about Catlon. Okay, Catlon is not listed here, but that's a tool we will we'll talk here. If you want to learn UFT QTP, we have videos you will, which we can give you. We used to teach it in the past, but it doesn't run on Windows 11 anymore. Okay, uh, I mean, the version we have, it doesn't run. So we switch to Catlon, which is another popular tool. They work very similar. Okay, uh, Ruby Cucumber, you will get some hands-on on the Cucumber. But Ruby is a programming language, okay? Uh, water Selenium is, is part of the, once you know programming, then you can do Water and Selenium, build the automation test. So we'll give you overview, plus you will get some hands-on how the Cucumber tests are written and what, what, what they are. So you will do hands-on on this Cucumber. Um, but in this camp, we're not going to cover. We have a completely different camp dedicated for four weeks, just for Ruby Cucumber Water Selenium. Okay. Uh, SOAP UI, we'll talk about uh, next Saturday. Uh, SOAP UI and Postman, there are two tools. Postman is not listed here, but they both use for web service testing. We'll see what the web services are uh, and uh, how, the, how those tools work. Okay. So you have to pick up those tools, SOAPman or and post UI. Uh, post, uh, SOAP UI and Postman. Uh, other than that, I mean, Michael Office, right? Companies don't have any of this Jira thing, then you will use Michael Office, which is Excel Word templates and so forth. Okay. Any question here? Okay. So, one thing is not listed here is a SQL. Okay, SQL is not again listed here, but you will use that as part of uh, from the quality assurance standpoint. What you need to know from the QA, we will cover that basically. Okay, and uh, I think I'll send you a link to download the software, install it on your machine so that you can do some hands on practice as well uh, with the, some basic syntax. Okay, uh, go ahead. Roy. Mm -hmm. Do we learn, uh, when we get to web services, do we learn SOAP UI and Postman tools too? Yes, work? that's correct. Yep, we'll cover the basic concepts about the web services. We'll, as part of that, SOAP UI, we'll go through HTML um, um, because you need to understand those, how they are being written, um, XML and JSON, three different uh, types of data formats. Okay, and then we'll dive into the tools, how you can test the services using those tools. Because without that, you cannot uh, test any of the services. So it's gonna be really busy over next uh, four sessions. Okay, uh, with the different tools and technologies. Now, does the QA need to know anything? <laughs> more you pick up, more it's gonna be, uh, you will be marketable basically. But this one will give you enough, basically, okay? Uh, uh, along with manual testing, right? Whatever you are doing, that's the core. 
on top of that, you have these tools to learn. Okay. And most of the companies will um, will expect you to pick up as you go for work. They might be using some other tool. You have to pick that up. Okay, because it, these tools are popular <laughs> tools, but there might be if you just search for it, you're gonna find 50 other tools. Okay, for for different things. Load runner J meter, we're not gonna cover in this camp. If you want to learn something, I can point you. J meter is free. Load runner is very expensive tool. Uh, like companies like Nationwide, they have like a four people team, which manage it for the whole uh, nation. Okay. As I said, these are specialized tools with the specialized skill set. Um, now, company like Nationwide has probably 200 plus QAs or 300 plus QAs. They have four load runner people. So jobs are very narrow, okay? And uh, it's a very competitive. But if you maybe spend time on one of these tools, understand the concept, it will increase your marketability. Okay. Any question? Any other things? Your question, Roger? No. Okay. You're processing the information, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then uh, if no question, then we can move on uh, from here and actually start working with the tools, starting with the DevOps. Mm -hmm. You have a question? Mm -hmm. oh. This one, you, I think you mentioned that it's already sent out or it's in the... Which one? The slides. Uh, yes, slides are already there in the digital uh, the Google Drive. Okay. Yeah, it's under DevOps uh, folder. Okay, Azure DevOps or DevOps folder. Okay, so, oh, one, one more thing. So before we dive into the DevOps, because these tools, uh, DevOps, Jira, ALM, uh, well, ALM is not, it's more of a waterfall type of tool, okay? This is more of a waterfall type of tool, or it uses it can be used for both. DevOps and Jira are for agile process. <coughs> okay, so these are used heavily for agile, two weeks iteration, three weeks iteration. So let me cover that portion. Okay, before we dive into the tool, because you need some basic understanding of what really happens in the agile and how this uh, process works with the these tools. Okay, so let's come back here, see what happens in the Agile one. I'm not sure, did it cover this uh, part? No. No, okay. All right, so, um, so this is part of the slides that I put it out as well, okay? So you don't have <clears throat> to write down anything. Okay, so, this is uh, the overall picture of the activities that happens in the Agile process, okay, or Scrum framework. Remember, I asked you guys to create a Scrum project yesterday in the box. <laughs> it follows the similar process, basically, mm -hmm. or you can follow using the <coughs> um, this Agile process or Scrum framework process. Now, here I'm gonna throw some terminology uh, different uh, things. Okay. Uh, let me come here. Okay. So team members. So who does what? Okay. In the Scrum process. So you're going to hear a terminology called Scrum Master. So who is a Scrum Master in the Agile? Um, he's more like a PM. He's not a PM. But he's more like a project manager that we have seen in the waterfall area. Okay, but in the agile, he's more uh, terminology wise, he's called a scrum master. Remember, it's a scrum process. Scrum master is the is the name for the somebody who is doing the project management type of activities, reporting, uh, daily reporting, resource, uh, and uh, so forth. He is responsible for. Uh, any issue resolution, 
and communication with the stakeholders and all, all those things similar to the project management, right? So he is responsible for that. Now remember, agile in the agile, it's a two to three weeks iteration, right? In the waterfall, it can be six months, it could be six years. We don't know, uh, depending on the size of the project. But every two weeks, these all people are involved in delivering the software, small piece of smart software to the customer. That's the whole goal of the agile process. So this guy manages any issue that comes in the team. If somebody is uh, somebody needs any answer, he will basically coordinate all those things um, and uh, escalate issues with the upper management. If the if the business analyst or or, or product owner are not showing up in the team meetings, then he will manage all the issues. Okay, that that's his role. Issue resolution, communication, uh, those are different things. That is us. Other than Scrum Master, everybody. Um, else is called team members. So developers, <coughs> QA, BAs, anybody else, they are part of the team members. They are called team members, okay? Uh, so that's what these are. You guys know the stakeholders? Who, who, who is a stakeholder? Anybody who's in the project, the customer? Uh, not the, you, you, the users, the users are users, right? Because anybody who is a, like a project sponsor, yeah. right? Who writes you a check, kind of like our clone, is more like a stakeholder, right? Uh, but you could have other people as well. Anywhere, anybody who is impacted by this uh, product or project, that's considered stakeholder. Okay. Generally, they are they could be business users, maybe executive team or whoever is sponsor. Uh, they are part of the stakeholder. Users are the actual users of the system. So kind of like a dealer, lender, they are the users of the system. Uh, they, they are listed as business users, okay? So when, when, when it comes to the testing, these guys are the one, they will go and test it. You complete the UAT testing, okay? But Alflow might be managing the project or giving the writing the check and so forth, okay? Now product owner. Product owner is uh, more common as a, it's, it's more like a BA who manages the requirements, but sometimes product owner is part of the business team. So business, right? Or oh, there, are, there are 50 users. You're probably not gonna go to the 50 users. The business might have some somebody named product owner who code is works with the IT very closely and prioritize all the requirements. Okay, so the, the product owners, could be part of the business, could be part of the IT team, depending on how they uh, do it. Uh, it could, could take a role of a business analyst as well, document the requirements. But again, sole responsibility of the product owner is managing the requirement for the sprints or, or the project. And I'll, uh, these are the gen general roles, right? So let's come back here. Now you understand different roles. Let's take a look at it, who does what, right? So product owner is the one who manages the requirement, okay? For, for what needs to be built as part of the product or project, whatever terminology they are using. So he collects input from users, customers, stakeholders, all the people and documents as in the form of user stories. Now, what are user stories? They are nothing but the requirement. Okay, in the agile world, requirements are called user stories. So, for example, uh, user stories, right? For example, you have managed lender, right? You have managed lender. As part of that, the requirement, there are 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 individual requirements. So, this guy, when it documents in the agile formats, he will go and create lender search by lender name, right? So he will create one story here. He will have a second story, basically 2.2, which can be lender uh, can approve or reject credit applications, whatever. Third, third requirement, he will, he will do that um, basically. So he will document 
all the stories one by one. Okay. Now in the agile world, all this collection of all the stories is called the product backlog. So he, all his job is to prioritize work with the customers and document all the requirements. And he will assign the priority as well. Hey, this is high priority. This is low priority, medium priority and so forth. And he will, he will document all the stories. Now, as part of the documentation, and I'll show you in the tool what goes in, he could create the actual screen layouts, working with the customers and put, put that in kind of like a mock-ups. This is how customers see it um, and uh, so forth. There's, there are certain things that no. goes in, not just one line, okay? So it becomes part of the sprint product backlog. It's a running list. So if, if the if he, if he has 50 stories and if the customer brings in new new requirement, then he will just go and document it in the product backlog in the tool. Okay. Now, this is a continuous process that happens not by the, over two weeks or one week. He'll just collecting, keep collecting the requirements basically. Okay. And document in the uh, product backlog. Now, two weeks starts. Now, IT team doesn't uh, come in the picture here. Well, sometimes IT team reviews the stories on uh, maybe monthly basis or something just to understand what the customer is asking. But then every two weeks, so let's say starting um, Monday to next Friday, uh, they have a sprint, basically. So the way it works is, uh, Product backlog, so IT team takes a look at it, look at all the high priority items. Okay, and they will pull in uh, basically three stories or five stories to, uh, to deliver over next two weeks. Um, assume it's a, it's a two week sprint, they have to deliver some feature end of two weeks to the customer. So let's say, for example, for our phone. So they have managed lender related stories, managed uh, login related stories. Um, they have all these different stories uh, uh, basically documented here. Now the vendor Monday comes, team members, basically the team, right? They will, they will meet on Monday morning, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. And they will look at all the stories that product owner has put together. And they will say, okay, we're gonna target the high stories because it provides a business value, more value to the customer. So we're gonna work on the high. If, the, if we run out of high, then it will target the medium one and it, otherwise we'll target the low at that. Okay, because it's a priority from the business. So they will look at it here in the sprint for planning meeting. Generally it lasts for four hours. So they will start at eight. They may, might, might be done by noon. But they will go through each story and they will say, okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna pull these five stories. We have three developers on the team uh, and only five stories out of 50, we can deliver over next two weeks. Okay, so they will pull in all the stories. It could be login related. It could be different, different things the way they have it. And they will pull in as part of the sprint. They can deliver over next five weeks. They can build those features basically, okay? So those stories, they will pull in and I will show you how they do it in the tool. So they will just uh, put, put, that is, put that part of the sprint. It will become part of the sprint backlog now because it's a two weeks. I have to deliver these five stories only over next two weeks. Okay, that's their scope. It becomes their scope over for next two weeks work. Now here, as part of the sprint backlog, they will go through the design process you guys are will be sitting on the team, right? Team meaning QAs, BAs, uh, developers. In the four hours, they will go through, understand the story. You are sitting there, so you understand what needs to be tested from QA standpoint. Developers will look at it, what needs to be built. So they might design, sketch out the whole screen layouts as well. Flush out the detailed design right there in four hours or five hours. Okay, and you will look at it from testing standpoint, how much uh, time it will take me uh, and so forth. You will provide the estimates right there as far as. There is no formal documentation. Okay, in the agile process, you're not gonna create test plan. Okay, separately. You will provide estimates right there and they will document right. They will create the task. 
So developers will say, in order to build this login screen, I need to create a HTML page. I also need to create a search store procedures in the database so that I can look up based on username and password. So they will add all the development tasks, basically, from, the, from their standpoint. You will provide the estimate for testing. Typically, SQLs don't uh, create the task, okay? But what you will do is, uh, so once, once after four hours is done, you go back to your desk, generally, and you will start working on the documenting the test cases. Because you know what needs to be built, the design is there, screen mockups are there, you understand the design, so now you can start building your test cases in the tool, tools like DevOps or Jira. Okay. Uh, so on the Monday, let's say you start on Tuesday, documenting test cases, you, and you will be done, um, depending on the scenarios, you go through the same process, test scenarios, breakdown, uh, create your lips, document every individual test case or all, all the stories, five stories that we picked up. Okay. Uh, so as part of that, you are you might be done by Wednesday, right? So we started on Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, you spend time on documenting the test cases. Um, Wednesday, you are done <coughs> documenting. Now developers might deliver a software on Wednesday. One feature, one story is done, they will deliver the software to you and you will execute your test cases. Open a defect, if something doesn't work, you will create a bug to report back to the developer. Next, software delivery is on Friday. You got the software first time on Wednesday. Next time you will get it on Friday. They will fix a bug along with the new feature, new stories. Then you will test a new story. So you repeat the whole defect management process, right? Finally, next Tuesday or Wednesday, you are done with the testing. Developers are done with the testing uh, coding, right? You have you call you certify the software. Yep, it's ready to go to the UAT user acceptance. You will deliver to the users. They will test it on Wednesday. If they have a defect, developer has to fix it on uh, Thursday. Okay, and uh, so every event, so you basically repeat this cycle, this uh, SDLC phases. Okay. Now at end of Friday, you deliver the working software. Uh, with the, those features, the login feature, plus you might just implement search only, right? And uh, business will start using it in production, basically at that point, and they will start utilizing the Affluent software. So that's finished work, right? Now, there are two more terminologies here, sprint review and sprint retrospective. Um, before I jump into that, so every 24 hours, so on a daily, uh, typically it's at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. All the team members, including product owner, they meet together for 15 minutes only. It's, uh, and what typically they discuss is, uh, okay, what is, what is the status of this uh, task? Basically, development task, you report your bugs, issues, if anything is there. Um, and if you need clarification, business will be there. So you all discuss any clarification wise um, and uh, you basically move on to the your activities, daily activities. It's called daily scrum meeting, okay? It happens typically on nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, whatever team agrees, time, time for business. So if people are in the different countries, they still have to make it basically, uh, doesn't matter, okay? So they, they log in from India at 8 p.m., whatever their time is, and uh, they have they will all attend, okay? That happens every 24 hours. Um, now, once the product is complete, development is complete, everything is good, you release to the production, but then you sit down with the customer in the sprint review. On Friday, you walk them through to the, basically this is not just customer, but the stakeholders, you show them the product demo, basically, and they get their feedback. So they might say, oh, this would have been nice if we had done the different things. So they, they try to like come up with the additional features or requirements based on the what you deliver, right? It goes back to the product owner 
because he's sitting there and he will create a backlog item. They will identify the priority right there. So that next time when it comes Monday, next Monday, you will again look at the product backlog and pick out the high priority items, medium priority, and so forth, and keep delivering the features. Okay. Uh, so that's what happens in the review demos, customer feedback, um, and define the product backlog. Now there is a word, terminology here, sprint retrospective. So here, as part of the process here, right? Uh, two weeks process. Um, let's say customer is not available. Uh, business users, daily scrum meeting, the business owners are not available to attend. And you cannot resolve the issue on time. So you cannot deliver all the work. Right, because you needed waited for two days and now time passed and you can't deliver all, all the stories that you picked out or requirement. So you discuss here in the sprint retrospective, what went wrong and how do we improve? So you bring those issues here as I would discuss as a team and um, you identify that, hey, customer or we didn't get these clarifications on time. How do we improve that? And customer says, uh, okay, I cannot make it at 9 a.m., whatever it is. Um, so you figure out different ways to get the feedback. And you incorporate the change in the process that you are following so that you can deliver the work on time every two weeks, basically. Okay, that's all the sprint retrospective is. What went wrong? What went well? Uh, if, if you deliver early, then you say, oh, we are estimating high, but uh, let's pull in more stories next time because everybody's sitting idle after Wednesday or two days. So that, that, that's what happened in the sprint retrospective. Okay, but this, this process is part of the Scrum process, Agile Scrum process. And I think most of the companies are moving towards this process. Um, any company that you look at it, they are trying to follow the Agile Scrum. Some companies are following very strictly some companies follow in the hybrid approach. Hybrid approach with the waterfall in Asia. So what, since remember, every day people needs to be available, right? Business owners and every, nobody has that for time. To be exactly available at 9 a.m. if there are other priority meetings or whatever. I've seen in the state government, people just don't show up from the business standpoint, right? So like nationwide, it's the same issue um, because people are so distributed, different time zones and so forth. So what they do is uh, they, they come up with a hybrid process. So requirements are collected well in advance. They create a waterfall type of document, get the sign on. Only thing some of the companies manage is the development process. Once the requirements are signed off, locked down, then they will say, okay, we're gonna deliver the work in uh, using the Agile framework. But we're not gonna add any more requirements. Because a lot of projects, they keep on going for years, right? So there are some drawbacks. Um, so that's how the companies are handling, following the hybrid approach, waterfall and Agile combined. But the waterfall, that means we can't change anything. That's correct. So requirements are locked down here in the hybrid approach. They lock down the requirement, get the sign off, in a formal piece of paper, hey, this is what we're gonna build. And then they will come here and they will say, okay, now we're gonna do design and development activities in this uh, agile manner. Mm -hmm. So we look at each requirements, um, each stories, and then we'll deliver the work. If they need some minor clarification, they will reach out to the business um, different way, maybe communicate via email or something for clarification, but business may not be available in the daily scrum meetings, okay? But they will still follow development process as an agile process. So there are different ways to tackle uh, this thing. Every, all the businesses are still run, learning, okay? It's been around for a long time, but uh, it's a different mindset. Delivering every two weeks is a high pressure work. And you have to stick to the time frame. You have to be good at estimates and everything, okay? Yes, Roy. Go ahead. Uh, so, 
for the hybrid approach, then uh, would there be a uh, test plan, all of those documents? Like no, there, there wouldn't be any documents. No it's documents. Is, uh, very less documentation except the uh, stories. Okay, user stories where you might see some sketches um, for the screenshot and so forth, but test plan uh, is not documented basically in a proper way. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, <clears throat> it depends on the company again. Like they said, what I have seen the test plans. They still have test plans. Somebody will create the test plan based on what they see in the requirements. So QLA might create it. But in the purely agile, there is nothing called test plan document. Okay, there is no deliverable. The, so the documents will be there. System design those. No, uh, you discuss, remember, you are discussing in the team sprint planning meeting, flushing mm -hmm. out all the detailed designs, uh, everything. So you are sitting there as a QA on the table with the developers, uh, business analyst, product owner, and so forth. And they will just do the drawing board exercise right there. What does this screen supposed to look like? Uh, what are the different things they're going to build? The product owner will also go and talk to uh... The consumers? Yeah, yeah, he's the main guy with the interaction. As I said, it's a role, right? Product owner is a role. So BA will take the role of the product owner or they might have a dedicated person uh, from the business standpoint. They both have the same role and responsibility. So, so from IT side, business analyst is there, right? But he can take on the role of the product owner as well. But if it's a bigger um, organization, they have dedicated product owners from the business standpoint, and they will work with the BA, business analyst, from the IT side, okay? For some time, business, uh, business analyst uh, may not be there on the team. You directly deal with the product owner. <coughs> they will assign to the other team. Not assign. They will just collect the user stories or requirements. Yeah, they, see, the whole idea behind the Agile is team is self-managing. Nobody assigns the work. So if, if there are three developers in the team, right? Uh, and to one QA, one business analyst, they will look at this requirement, right? And they say, oh, business identify this uh, high priority item. So login feature is high priority because they can do login without, um, and then if they are lender, then they say, oh, let's implement the search first. They have put it as a high priority. So they look at those high priority items. And then in the meeting, sprint planning meeting, and they'll pull it into the story and they'll work through only that part, basically, right? But they, they, they'll be like a self-managing team, okay? So developers say, I'm going to work on this part. I'm going to, somebody say, will say, oh, it's going to take uh, four hours and I'll take care of it. And they will manage that way, work with them. Nobody will assign, right, in, in the work. <clears throat> Any question on this process? Kind of for, um, product, uh, product owner, how to roles, for example, being a product owner and a VA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, big companies, they have dedicated product owners because business is much bigger, right? Somebody needs to understand the business side of things, right? So kind of like a nationwide, uh, they have different... Uh, Finance, they survive finance, they survive insurance, they survive whatever, different departments. Nobody has a full view. But they have dedicated product owners who understand the business and who can work with uh, 30 different groups within their company. <laughs> but that product owner works with them, gets a priority, then they don't understand sometimes IT. So they, they want somebody from IT to deal with them instead of the, they, they document uh, basically this thing. So they work with the business analyst and communicate and gives them the requirement. The business analyst will do the product uh, portfolio, uh, product backlog management. Right. Yeah, it's just how they are structured, that's all. But essential goal is it's a product backlog uh, creation or basically requirements collection from the, now who collects it, it just depends on the company. So this is a typical process. 
for agile and uh, you hardly will have to remember memorize how you want to do it uh, but you need to get familiar with different terminologies what is the sprint backlog what is the product backlog right uh, what is the sprint planning meeting this is these are generally interview questions as well for agile process and i'll send you a couple of videos to help you understand a little bit uh, gives that gives a little bit different perspective uh, what is sprint review what is daily scrum well, who is a scrum master different roles and so forth and what you're doing daily scrum meeting okay so kind of like a, we have that board uh, in the back i think i have example here um this is what it's supposed to look like okay so this is backlog so all the stories in the old days when we uh, old days meaning i guess 10 years ago or when we first started looking age out um we used to draw have this type of uh, creator on the wall in the companies kind of like what we have in the back okay that's how exactly it, it, it was uh, when we did not use the tools. Then you have this all the backlog items, whatever, what you are working on in the sprint. So I will have listed five stories here, print receipt, uh, feature, uh, feature re receipt user story, refund user story, all five stories are there. Now, then you have analysis, sprint, development first, testing and done, okay? So if if some if you pull in so this happens on Monday you pull in four five stories here, okay. Then if you have to collect additional requirements, generally this page you should already know if you are doing in the sprint planning. So you will identify those high level uh, items, uh, basically, and collect more get more clarifications on the requirement. So the business analyst will basically have these two items, okay. Um, but after four, four hours, you should be having good understanding what are we delivering over next two weeks. Okay, so development will create these two design items or development items. Okay, testing will have this uh, different item um, for, for you to test, sign up at the website, generate receipt. These are your test cases type of thing. Okay, and then finally, done meaning if everything is done, so I move the story from backlog. To the analysis, so I move it. So when, whenever it's uh, needing more clarification, I move from there to here. So it's in the tool you can drag and drop to different phase. Okay. Then when development is working on it, they will move the story from here to this uh, this uh, block here. So that means they are working on development. Then move it from here to when it's ready for testing, uh, or, or when it's uh, testing needs to happen, then you just move the story. When the tester is done testing, you move it to the done. Done meaning, okay, we are good uh, uh, at this point and uh, we're going to move it to done. But depending on if you have UAT phase, then you put it from the uh, testing to the uh, UAT phase and user will do the testing. You will have done at that, basically. Okay. But you move the story into different phases. This is how the stories uh, will work. And then in the tool, I'll show you how you can do drag and drop in the tool. So it's a different process, right? Each uh, team is working with different process. That's what, right? They're not working on refund means no, everybody's not working. No, your on. team. So generally, Scrum has uh, like about uh, eight to 10 members, huh. right? Your project team or product team, whatever feature you are uh, uh, line, they, they have different. There might be three different scrum teams. In big companies, they have five or 10. Then how many you have in the nation? Uh, JP Morgan? Uh, across the province, probably in excess of about 2,000 scrum teams. So yes, 2,000 scrum teams. Even the product line that I'm working with, I have 15 scrum teams. So that works. Yeah. So everybody's working on different uh, features. Now, these are big features, right? Uh, somebody is in credit card processing. Somebody is in uh, finance. I mean, uh, banking side of things. They, but two thousand teams, yeah. And every each team has eight to ten people max, right? That, that that's what uh, typically. Um, otherwise, they will break it down to for the teams. Okay. So it is the business analyst's job to get all the requirements and everything. But if his requirement information is not complete, then they cannot take it for the. That, that, yeah, that, that's what it's told here, right? Okay, 
this product order gave the requirement, but it needs for the clarification, right? So they move it from here. If this one is ready, there is no analysis yet. They will just move it. Say, oh, development is ready. They'll just move it. Go here. But if they need further things, then they will move it here. And business analysis will work with the product order or business and get clarification for them. Mainly, like it's the second, third, and fourth column. Yeah. It's waiting for analysis and analysis. Yeah. And waiting for the data. That's yeah. combinedly known as the product map of refinement. Yep. Yep. You understand the requirement. And then you go through it like just like what we went through the P C and D process. The developer goes through understanding what exactly they need to do it. Yeah. All of those things can happen from those three problems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Again, it's a different process for different companies, how they configure the tools, what process they configure. But I, this is the generally happens. And this is one example. If you look at that board, that might be different. Uh, you may not have analysis space because everything is already predefined. <laughs> Requirements are clear, then people will just move to the different phase, development phase. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So do you have questions, Roger? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I got it. So when you said it's if it's predefined, then we skip the the uh, yeah so the analysis phase. So product backlog, right? In the four hours, if I go through all five required or user stories and everybody is good, no questions needed, then they will just basically start working on the development item. But if they need, because you will have this board, right? So in our example, or if they say, oh, two stories will need for the clarification from the product owner. In four hours, I, we, we don't know what, what they mean. That's where they will put it in here so that business analysts can go clarify the requirements further, further refine the story, okay? And then that, that after, so you will do it on Monday, Tuesday, whenever the bill, then, then it will push it out for development right after that. Or development team, whenever, whenever it's done, the development team say, is it done? Uh, let me just put, put it here. This happens in the 9 a.m. meeting. Okay, every day they will take a look at it. Okay, where we are on these things and uh, what additional work we can take in. All right, so it's a little bit different than waterfall, different process, but again, goal is to deliver working software, right? We, it has to have a good quality software. Uh, you know, all the parts and features uh, needs to work at, at end of the day, basically, or end of the sprint. Okay. All right, so that's a just come. So you're gonna hear a few more terminologies, scrum board, storyboard. So what, what this one is a scrum board, storyboard, right? This is, this is what it is. Um, you have backlog, you, you, you product backlog and sprint backlog. Sprint backlog is for two weeks, product backlog is running list of requirements or story. You have tasks, tasks are, in order to implement the story, what are the things that we have to do from the development standpoint? Okay, strictly related to the development. So hopefully you guys are clear, right? On the, what the task is. So in order to implement this uh, feature, what are the development activities? I need to create a backend component, database component, all those things from the development standpoint. Okay, so that's what the start task is. Sprint or iteration, two weeks iteration, uh, running every two weeks, uh, it, it starts a new sprint. Uh, phases, again, these are high level um, items, uh, different phase, right? Uh, basically, SDLC type of thing, right? Uh, that's what it is. And finally, definition of done. I think this is the most common interview question as well. What 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 is the def, what do you, what do you mean by done? Okay, so when we say done here, what does it mean? Does it mean everything goes to the production? Does it mean it goes to the UAT? Again, companies implement differently. 
if your testing is done, but are you pushing out to production? If you are not, you basically, most likely you will not push to the production. Uh, you will you will give it to the user for further testing, or you just move on to the next iteration at the end. Okay. Some companies like uh, Amazon, they push it to the production and 50 times a day, right? So that's that definition of done is different, basically. Put it to the put it in the production. Okay. All right. I think uh, if no other question, then we can get back into action a little bit. So hopefully this one uh, gives you some idea about the item. So let's take a, like a five minute break. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, it's a lot of information. Um, so we'll take a five minute break and uh, we'll start with the tool to actually start working on uh, uh, looking at the different features in the tool. But just keep this picture in mind. Okay. 